You're a loyal son, darling. Well, heck, if a guy can't be loyal to his own mother. Cool it. We've got company. Hey, Dave, did you know the Durgans just got a new car? Oh, big deal. Everybody gets a new car this time of year. We don't. Because we're different. Well, we certainly are. Nobody else has a 1928 Porter in their garage. Well, that's what makes us different. <laughs> Daddy, you should see the new car Bobby Osborne's father got. What a rod. What a gang up. Aren't we ever going to get a new car, Daddy? How about a new used one? Oh, don't worry, kids. We'll get a new car. As soon as the junkyard claims this one. Oh, bite your tongue. The junkyard will never claim that Porter, honey. My loyal son. Oh, I'm only teasing, Dave. If it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. That's my girl. It's good enough for me, too, Dad. That's my boy. And me, too. That's my baby. That's my family. <laughs> Mrs. Crabtree, Mrs. David Crabtree? Yes. Are you in good health? Steady pulse? Uh, normal blood pressure? Not subject to fainting spells? A stout heart? <laughs> what, what, what's this all about, anyway? Uh, yes, who are you? What do you want? Yeah, who are you? What do you want? Who are we? What do we want? Oh, sublime innocence. Who we are doesn't matter. It's who you are that counts. Mrs. Crabtree, hold on to your husband. Brace yourself. Ready? You are now the proud owner of this magnificent automobile. If there's a patron saint for old cars, whoever you are, hell! Everybody knows in the second life we all come back sooner or later As anything from a pussy cat to a man-eating alligator The way you all may think my story is more fiction than it's fact but believe it or not, my mother did Decided she'd come back as a car She's a very own guiding star A 1928 quarter That's my mother dear She helps me through everything I do And I'm so glad she's here I'm my mother the car I'm my mother the car Mrs. Crabtree, my name is Walter Frack, president of the Feedback Supermarket. Now, I'm Jenkins, public relations. These are newspaper reporters. Brentwood Breeze. This car, this beautiful limousine, is yours, Mrs. Crabtree. You won it. Your name, your lucky name, was drawn out of the feedback this morning. Do you see? Mrs. David Crabtree. That's she. Hey, that's you. That's me! Now, yes. here are the keys and the transfer of, of ownership. Congratulations, Mrs. Crabtree. But I don't understand. <laughs> she doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. <laughs> what is it you don't understand, my dear? Well, I don't shop at the feedback supermarket. I mean, I was there for the first time the other day just to return some deposit bottles, and that's when I threw this card in your big feed bag. You shop at the Costa Less Market. Shops at Costa Less. Oh, don't write that. Don't, don't take that picture. You don't shop at the feed bag? I shop at the feed bag. Oh, I was there yesterday, as a matter of fact. We were at the Costa Less yesterday, Daddy. You said you wouldn't be caught dead in the feed bag, Daddy. You said the feed bag was a jip joint. Kids, what, what do they know? <laughs> Don't put that down. Don't snap that picture. Well, thank you, Mr. Prescott. It is a beautiful car. The winner of this beautiful car shops at the cost of less. <laughs> oh, you're fired. <laughs> can, I, can I drop you someplace? <laughs> oh, you sure know how to hurt a businessman. You're fired. I've spent all my life building up a trade. And the winner shops at the cost of less. We've got him in the car. We've got him in the car. I can't believe it. Can you believe us owning a car like this? Oh, boy, will the neighbors see us. Will my clients see us drive up in this boat? Hey, AM, FM radio. With speakers in the front and the back. And on the side. And look at the cigarette lighters with pearl handles. In front and in back. And on the sides. Check this. A telephone. Hello? 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 Hello, this is James Bond. What's my next assignment? 10-4, <laughs> 11-21. Will you stop that honking? Nuts. Here, honey, it's for you. Hello, hello. Hey, Remember me? What do you mean? What are you, some kind of fink? Going ape over that limousine floozy? You know you can't afford that car. Why not? It's paid for. Sell it. 
come on, Mama, are you kidding? Sell that beautiful hunk of iron? Yeah, that's what I said. Sell it. Mama, I can't do that. It's Barbara's car. I can't make her decisions for her. Besides, she's in love with her. It would break her heart. Dave? I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, honey. Dave, this may come as a shock, but we can't keep this car. You're kidding. We can't afford two cars. Well, it's not a matter of affording. It's already paid for. Oh, Dave, I'm as gone on this car as you are, believe me. But let's be practical. If we sell the car, we can get a lot of money. How important is money? <coughs> I'll be right back. What are you doing to me? Barbara wants to sell the car. I know, but... You're talking her out of it. That car is an intruder, David. You're hurting me deep down in my distributor. I'm sorry, Mom. If it were a choice between your mother and your wife, I could understand it. But your wife, that darling girl, that sweet, gentle, understanding soul, <laughs> she wants to sell the car and you don't. Okay, Mom, okay. I guess you're right. We can't afford the car. Oh, that's my boy who said that. I'll tell Barbara to go ahead and sell it. She wants to anyway, and it's her car. Dave? I'll be right back. Yeah, honey? Dave, darling, you're so understanding. Well, I guess that's what husbands are for, to be understanding. Well, now, you were saying that you want Oh, that I want to get rid of the car. But you're right. It is too beautiful to sell. We're going to keep it. Oh, no. Oh, well, won't be too much of a burden. We can scrimp and save, and we'll just be very careful. Be like a newborn baby. Yeah, but honey, a minute ago you said you wanted to sell the car. Oh, that was before you talked me out of it. My son, the brainwasher. But one thing for sure. We've got to get rid of the porter. Right, we'll get... Right, first thing in the morning... Oh, we're not going to get rid of the porter. Why? Well, because we're not selling it. It's my, it's my porter, and I put a lot of hard work in it, and, and it's... Uh, well, one thing's for sure, the, the porter stays. Okay, but... But we keep the new car, too, right? Well, okay. I'll be right back. I noticed how thrilled you were with that big car out there. Mom, it's a brand new car. People are always thrilled with new cars. Call the junkyard, Dave. Tell them I'll be over shortly. You fix things just swell with Barb. Mom, I tried. It just didn't work. You heard. Now you hear this. This garage isn't big enough for that car and me. Oh, dispossessed out of my own garage. I can't even breathe. No, I'd rather freeze than be covered by this awful smell. If I throw my top down, I can get rid of this darn cover. <laughs> It. Look, the bumper's scratched. Honey, that scratch was already there. Well, something bumped into it. You heard it. The porter. And of course, the porter came up there and bumped into the bumper and then backed off all by itself. Well, something happened to my poor, beautiful car. the big idea. It was an accident. That dirty canvas cloth you covered me with obstructed my view. Mom, you're just being mean. Mean? Your sweet, dear, lovable mother? You dispossess me. You cover me with a dirty paint-stained cloth, turning me out in the cold, and I'm being mean. I'm sorry, Mom. You should be. You're right. There's not room in this family for two cars. Sit tight. I'll go tell Barb. Finally. Barb? Look at this car. Isn't this the most beautiful car you ever saw? It's beautiful. I'm so happy. Uh, you are? I've never been happier. Really? I'm going to bed. Coming? Yeah, I'll, I'll be there in a minute, honey. And Dave, thanks for letting me keep the car. <laughs> that, that, that's all right. Well, Dave, you didn't tell her. Well, I kind of... I sort of, uh... You kind of, sort of what? I kind of, sort of didn't tell her. Dave? I know, Mom. My son, the Tower of Jelly. No, no, a thousand times, no, no, no. Oh, 
Come on, Barb. No, I am not selling this car. Barb, would you listen to me? I'm trying to talk to you. But you're not saying anything. Oh, yes, I'm saying. What is that stuff you're putting all over the car? Paper wax. It's an anti-scratch. This beautiful thing's not going to have a mark on it. You drive it, it'll have a mark on it. This car says for driving, it's for sitting in on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Come on, Barb, just let's sell it. I'm not selling the car. A little while ago, you insisted that I keep it. Why the sudden change of heart? It's just not in our class, that's all. It's not in our class. The porter's more in our class, not, not this... Luxurious thing. Well, it may not be in your class, but it is mine. I heard. I heard the whole thing. Well, I can't get it to budge. What's going to happen to me? Well, don't worry, Mom. I'll make you comfortable. We're in for a cold spell, and I'm out of a warm garage. Hey, I know. I'll build you one of those carports. You know those nice big aluminum carports they advertise in the home section of the Sunday paper? Is she a beauty? Tear it down. You're encroaching on my property. What? Don't want me. I happen to have bought the property next door to you. My name is Baxter, and I think you should become acquainted with the man who's going to sue you. Oh, now, just a minute. What makes you think... That... I'm not a thinking man, Crabtree. I'm a knowing man. And I know you're going to have to tear down that carport. Which one of you fellows is David Crabtree? I am. Crabtree the squatter? Mm. Right there. Uh, I'm Harper Cassidy, building inspector. You don't have a permit. A permit to put up a carport? Well, it's a building, isn't it? Yeah, and it's encroaching on my property by three and one half inches. Tear it down. But I just put it up. Just tear it down. What is it? What's going on? Oh, these fellas are trying to tell me that I can't build a carport on my own property. Yes, except for three and a half inches. Well, so take it down. Well, honey, what about the porter? The poor old thing won't have any shelter. Huh. He talks like it's a relative. <laughs> Honey, why don't we sell the new car? Why, because of a carport? That's silly. Mr. Uh, Crabtree? Here, property tax department. Did you just build this carport? Yes. Yeah, well, I... Yes, certainly did. And that's certainly going to increase his property value. Property yes, value? Yes, sir. He's going to get a nice, fresh tax bill the first of the year. No, no, wait. He's tearing it down. He has a wrecking permit? Wrecking permit? Well, a wrecking of course You guys not. are out of your head. Carport stays. Uh, no, it doesn't. He doesn't have a building permit. Yeah, well, that's your problem. Permit. Look, he can't tear down this carport unless he gets a wrecking permit. But he's wrecking encroaching permit. on my property. And that's your problem. Now, now, just I've never minute, seen him before in my life. Barnes is the name. Ah, well, Cassidy here. I'm Baxter. Uh, now, now, now they know each other, so they can You get know that trouble. Crabtree cannot erect a, an edifice like that without a building well, permit. Well, I just... Oh, true. But as you can see, it's an accomplished fact. And as we say down at the office, he done it. You had to go and win a new car. Well, you had to build an airport. Carport. Whatever. Mrs. Crabtree? Yes? I understand you just won a new automobile. Oh, that's right. Yeah, what about it? Congratulations. Oh, thank you. What about the new automobile? It's valued at $8,000. You want to buy it? Oh, it's not for sale. My only interest in the car is its value, Mrs. Crabtree. My name is Farley, district tax collector. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you list that car's income. Is it taxable? Sure, probably about $500. As much as that? Probably more. I'll be glad to give you a rough estimate. Oh, I'd, I'd like to get this straight. I'll... Oh, more than $500? I'm warning you, Crabtree. It comes down or I'm suing. I'm suing! Tear it down. Don't you tear it down unless you get a wrecking permit. <laughs> What's up? You have just been presented with the M.O. What's that? Modus operandi. The method of operation to get Barbara to sell the car. You mean because of the income tax man? And the property tax man and the man on whose land you are encroaching. But... Oh, I get it. Money. It's going to cost money to keep that car. Where are we going to find that kind of money? Yeah. Hey, th thanks a lot for the NG, Mom. That's M.O. Yeah, I am all. Oh, what did you say that means again? Modus operandi. Got it? Got it. Use it. Some lawyer. How's it coming? Slow. I'm sorry, but we're still trying to work things out. That's all right. Take your time. Would you like to come inside, Mr. Harris? Oh, this won't take too long. Please. Mrs. Crabtree! Mrs. Crabtree, congratulations on your new automobile. You want to buy it? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that car is a real beauty. You should give it everything it deserves. What do you mean? My name is Harris. Your car deserves the best, and so do you. 
I still don't understand. Oh, insurance, Barbs. Uh, the car needs insurance, and so do we, right, Mr. Harris? Well, you're an understanding man, Mr. Crabtree. Your husband understands. And it'll be expensive, too, right? Uh, well, uh, I mean for complete coverage. I expensive? We'll need personal liability, right? Right, fire and theft? Of course. Property damage and collision? You can't do without property damage and collision. Major medical. Oh, major medical. Why, of course, I almost forgot. Every car owner has major medical. For scratches, dents, lacerations. Hey, Crabtree, you should have been an insurance man. <laughs> if I say so myself, what a beautiful M.O. And don't forget animal coverage. Animal covers for the car? For the car? Oh, sure. Supposing a dog nips at those soft, beautiful tires. Hey, how come I didn't think about that? Are you putting me on? Am I putting her on, Mr. Harris? Of course not. Your car deserves the best. You're a good man, Crabtree. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to figure out the cost of the policy. You sure can cover everything, Mr. Harris. Everything. <laughs> Any moment now, Mr. Crabtree. Good, good. Uh, uh, Mr. Crabtree. Yes, sir. This is going to take a little longer than I thought. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Cassidy. Just be accurate. Cover everything. Remember, I'd rather pay a little more than a little less. <laughs> oh, Miss Crabtree, only a woman of your fine nature is deserving of winning such a lovely piece of automotive engineering. My name is Fink. But never judge a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Fink, it looks like something's on your mind. Well, there certainly is. A car like that, for instance, that's what's on my mind. You want to buy it? Dave! Surely you're jesting. I, I can't afford it. Miss Crabtree, I have come not to buy your car, but to improve it. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Improve it? How? Seat covers. Oh, seat covers. <laughs> Gee, that's great, honey. We can't allow our miserable bodies to sit all over that beautiful upholstery. There's no handprints, jelly bread. Jelly bread? You can work for me anytime, Mr. Crabtree. Well, if I keep that car, I just may be doing that, Mr. Fink. <laughs> How much would the seat come? Well, I'll have to figure it out. Uh, between you and me, I didn't come prepared. I, I didn't even bring my pencils. See, I thought you folks would come put up a fight. <laughs> Good man you got there, Miss Crabtree. Miss Dave, I'm worried. What about, honey? Well, how are we going to pay for all this? And is it all necessary? Well, the government has to have their cut. And insurance, of course, that's necessary. And then there's the seat covers. Yeah, we have to have the seat covers. Yeah, and the carport. Heaven knows what they're up to over there. Well, it's all going to be pretty expensive, isn't it? Yeah. Well, don't worry. We'll think of something. Like what? Well, we could always get a loan on the car for the upkeep. More payments? We're already making payments on the television and the refrigerator, the nursery school. Yeah, on the stove and my... No, pager. we're not taking out any more loans. Ah, the U.S. government doesn't want too much. The tax on your car, based on normal income, should be about $650. $650? Are you sure that's enough? We're in a higher income tax bracket now, you know. You're a great American, Mr. Crabtree. Well, your I'm insurance sorry. is a real bargain, Mr. Crabtree. Complete coverage for $652.87. $652. Are you sure you figured in the uh, volcanic eruptions here we have? Oh, right? well, that, that'll come to $763.26. He calls here right. made of finest vinyl in polyester laminated, also with a natural Alaskan seal, is going to come to $468.04. Bargain. That is a bargain. At Crabtree. Well, I'm not finished. Uh, sorry. Plus sales tax. Sales tax. Well, that's all right. Then. Now? Uh, now. Thanks. Huh? Uh, Crabtree, I'm going to allow the encroachment for a small monthly payment of $42. $42. Uh, that's real neighborly of you. I appreciate it. I can no. backdate that building permit. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. But you'll have to take out a license. That'll be $50. $50. Crabtree, right. you're a veteran, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, I'm going to assess that carport real cheap. $250. $250. That's very reasonable, isn't it, Barb? 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 Reasonable? How are we going to pay for all this? Tell me that. Aha, uh -huh, but we know how, don't we, son? That good old modus operandi. Well, there's only one thing to do, Barbs. Right, and I'm going to do it. Good girl. Sell the porter. Bad girl. Wasted by my own M.O. <laughs> Something special for a person who is warm-hearted enough to forget about selling the porter. I can do without the flowers, but what about these bills? Well, will, you, will you listen if I tell you, honey? Oh, I'll listen. Well, I was just saying, you know that movie we watch every night right after the news at 11 o'clock? Mm -hmm. And that guy comes on real loud, talks louder in the movie and says, Hi, I'm your lonely dealer down here, and I've got so many cars I don't know what to do. And he's sick and sad because he can't sell them. He gives us $5,000 for the car. I'd like that. Well... What do you say? But I hate the thought of the car being mistreated by a stranger. Honey, it's only a machine. 
You call me the, the sad Dutchman, and I'll go back to car otherwise, okay? You remember his last line? Uh, Some people support charities. I support people. Now back to the movie. <laughs> uh, hello, Feedback Supermarket? I'd like to speak to Mr. Frack, please. Yes, the president. Why, Mr. Frack, what are you doing here? Hello, oh, Mr. Crabtree. Mrs. Crabtree, we have news for you. Oh, delightful news. That's why I rehired him. <laughs> well, uh, tell them, Jenkins, tell them. The car, the big, beautiful car, it doesn't belong to you. What do you mean? What, what, what do I mean? I'll tell them, I'll tell them. You see, there was a mistake. Now, the lady who really won the car was a Mrs. David Crabtree of Sacramento. You were the wrong Mrs. Crabtree. The right Mrs. Crabtree shops at our feed bag in Sacramento, where all the right people shop. Oh, now, hold on a minute. I'm going to take uh, no. this in a... What do you mean, no, Dave, honey? I'm a lawyer. They, they can't get away with this. The car isn't mine. I didn't win it. It doesn't belong to me. You belong to me. The porter belongs to me. The children belong to me. That's all I want. Here are the keys, Mr. Frack. Thank you. I have a man here who'll drive it right back. Hey, Come hey, back. Hey, now, here are the keys. Take this right back. Did you see that? Right through my rear view mirror. Barbara Deneen put up a fight. She could have gotten five thousand dollars for that car. Then Frack and Jackson come along and all of a sudden Not all of a sudden, Davy. She called Frack and arranged the whole deal. She called? There's no Mrs. David Crabtree in Sacramento. She told Frack she wanted the car delivered to a worthy day nursery. My wife gave the car to charity? A very nice charity, David. When converted, that car will transport a lot of deserving children. <laughs> My wife, a wheeler and dealer if I ever saw one. She had the right M.I. all the time. M.O.? No, Davy. M.I. Mother's intuition. Cute, cute. Boy, it looks great, honey. You know, it's a funny thing. What? I said it's a funny thing, uh... You never polished a car before. It's a nice car. <laughs> Funny thing. What? Oh, that there should be two Mrs. David Crabtrees. That's a nice name. Have I told you lately that I like you? Here, you finish it. Yeah. What's that for? You call that a kiss? What's wrong with it? Barbara walked away, didn't she? Yeah, but... She didn't fly. Where were the skyrockets? Did you hear a thousand violins or waves crashing on the shore? Mama, it was only a kiss. Sonny boy, when your father kissed me, va, va, voom. <laughs> This weekend, The Wonders of TV Land presents a sampling of Hollywood stars like Jodie Foster and Julie Andrews, appearing in rarely seen television treasures. Don't miss Big Stars, Little Screen. Today, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific, on The Wonders of TV Land. That's my mama, dear. She helps me through everything I do, and I'm so glad she's here. My mother, the car. I'm on the call.